This is the cradle that holds Christ. That is scripture for you. Holding the promise of Christ. All the way back in Genesis, this is a supporting text for the upcoming Sunday. The Old Testament reading is Genesis 4, the story of Cain and Abel. Ooh, let's get to it. Verse 1. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife. He yadded her. They yadded. They knew each other deeply. We're talking about sex here. The erotic desire, yes, but within the um, trust of a marriage between Adam and Eve, these are two good things. For one, it is pleasurable, this thing, but it is also a good thing that there is a fence around it, that this is exclusive between a man and his wife, a wife and her husband. So Adam knew Eve, he yachted her, and she conceived, this is yet another good thing of marriage, conceived procreation. How about that? God's promise getting to more than just one generation, but many, all the way to you, procreation. And she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. Our kids are the gifts of God. And again, she bore his brother, Abel. So now we have brothers. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep. And Cain, a worker of the ground. So we've got a farmer. Yeah. And we've got a shepherd. A rancher. And a farmer. Every Western movie you've ever heard about probably has a conflict between ranchers and farmers. And here we have brothers. You can start to even see the conflict that's about to happen between these people. In the course of time, time, Cain thought, okay, I'm working in the field. I am a worker of the ground. What must God want from me? He must want a symbol, something of my work, a product of my doing. I'm going to bring the Lord a sacrifice, an offering of the fruit of the ground. So Abel sees this. God wants what I do. Okay, I'll do the sacrifice thing. God will find pleasure in the aroma of coming off of my burning sacrifice here. Is that, did God ask for this? No. So Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. They couldn't give it all, so they'll give a symbol, symbol maybe a tithe, maybe 10%, maybe the first. And get this, and the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. What is going on? Was it the heart behind it? No. Was it the actual substance of this sacrifice that hadn't been asked for by the Lord our God? No. This is divine election. God will choose you and others apart from the law. This is just God is God being God, choosing. Do we know why? No, we do not. But he had regard. So Cain heard this. He saw his brother receive the blessing. What is it? Where does that leave him? His face fell. I think you could. You could identify with what is going on here. There's jealousy. My brother gets it, but I do not. I'm going to reject this. Verse 6, the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? I, the italicized, the italics are mine. 
This is a Hebrew verb where accepted. Did he accept the sacrifice and the sacrifice is what made him right? Not at all. What had Abel actually received? Was it a reward of acceptance for his sacrifice? This is the same Hebrew verb as we get find in Psalm 32. We read this, and it says, Instead of accepted, blessed is the one whose transgression is accepted. So we're just going to accept the sin. Your best works. Is that what will happen? No. The Hebrew word is lifted up, forgiven, taken off of you. Abel had received not acceptance for his offering and sacrifice. He had received forgiveness, and it made Cain angry. To see God's promise go to someone else and not you, we can only reject. I cannot take it. Cain was beside himself. God continues, and if you do not do well, sin is still on you. It is crouching at the door. If your sin has not been lifted off of you, where does it remain? On you, Cain. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. You're left to your, on your own here. Whew. Cain is teeming mad. He's steaming. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. This is the first murder. The law hadn't been given, you thou shalt not kill. But the effects of sin, unbelief, the effect of not receiving God's divine election and seeing it go to someone other than you, he's going to attack. He attacked that. He's trying to take it away through murder. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground, calling upon the Lord from the ground. The blood is doing this. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. This murder, this homicide, will not be taken well. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Now that's a true confession coming out of Cain. I can't take it. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive. What you say to me, God, is happening. And I'll be a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. He's worried for his life. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Would this stop killing and violence in our world, in our society, all the way to today? It has not. But... Will murder stand in the way of God electing his chosen sinners? Violence, the sword, cannot. It does not have that power. Never has. Never will. Nothing can stand between you and the promise that God has chosen to give to you. His divine election for you remains. The Lord put a mark on Cain, lest any who found him should attack him. So he will continue to put a fence around killing, saying, You shall not do this, and also prod you in all the ways that you do murder. 
you become angry, Jesus would eventually turn up the heat of the law on this commandment, thou shall not kill. You give another the silent treatment, you're killing him or her. We are not found righteous. Our offering in this regard is not to be taken. It won't be taken. Only through the forgiveness of sins and the promise of Christ that we are driven to when we know we're guilty of this, of being angry with our sister or brother, of killing him in outward and inward ways. Now with the promise of Christ, we'll be free of this. Murder, homicide cannot get in the way of God's divine election for you. So here comes a mini sermonette on Genesis 4. I've got an idea, Cain exclaimed. Now what came next out of Cain's mouth is the result of our bound will, a misunderstanding of what worship truly is, and a revolt against divine election, and a thrashing out that attempts to destroy through murder the promise that his choosing is. Violence. Cain's idea was this. Since God must want something from me, I'll give him the work I'm producing, sweating and toiling six days in a row before the Sabbath day in the field for. I'll give him a sacrifice, Cain said. Cain turns worship into the seed that he is producing instead of the seed that is given to him in God's promise, the seed Jesus Christ, that would crush the head of the serpent. You must want this from me. We all do this. We want worship to go in this direction instead of receiving God's word and responding in prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. So, I'll give a token like Cain and Abel. My works, my intellect, my choice that signifies that I give everything to God. Now, false gods desire this sacrifice, but not the Lord your God. Then God chooses Abel to absolve, forgive. You heard the translation, right? And he didn't forgive Cain in that moment. Was Abel's sacrifice better? No. Was his internal heart movement more pure? No. God favors whom he favors. This election sans the law, without the law, is revolting. And in Cain, we see the thrashing that it causes. His best works are rejected, so Cain angrily blames God and anyone else nearby. Violence comes out. It spirals. It attempts to take away the promise of election for others. You've got God's promise, I'm going to kill it kill you, he thought. How are you, a Cain, made into an Abel? He favors you. God favors you, blesses you, keeps you, and lifts his countenance upon your face. You are lifted up, forgiven, as Psalm 32, 1 is translated, and so it is here. It's the forgiveness of sins. Those who no longer wear their sins on a badge, like a badge of honor, like a tattoo. They tattoo their own sin on their body. No, nope, we put it on Christ. And he has killed for them your sins on the cross. Cain thought he had a power of the law that could unelect Abel. But the passive righteousness that you receive cannot be reversed. Your baptism will be questioned. Baptism itself, they'll try to remove it through violence sometimes. But God's promise remains. It cannot be overcome. It is certain. Your absolution is absolute. The sword of the law does not bring about life, but death. But the sword is powerless in preventing God's choice for you. You have a merciful God. 
That's what he says.